Hello everyone and welcome to RSS Interstellar with Exoplanets in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 Realism Overhaul where we are going to ultimately aim to get to other star systems which just as a reminder are really far out here and for now we are examining the various parts in KSB Interstellar and maybe I'll get to some parts in like far future or near future we'll see what options we have and my goal is to design custom spacecraft for them uh, we'll probably mock them up with uh, procedural parts and panels and whatever but ultimately I might be creating parts in Blender to hold these engines together basically or whatever other parts we decide to use for our journeys and so that's the plan. Uh, now there have been some comments on the videos. First of all, Zach Bowles asked about comets and asteroids. Uh, and in the case of real solar system, we do have asteroids. You can see them here. I've uh, started tracking one here and they are around. I don't know about comets. Uh, we have class A to class I gargantuan. Uh, is this maybe, uh, no, that's not, not a comet either. Uh, so. I don't know about comets, but we do have asteroids. In fact, this one that I have tracked here is already captured into Earth orbit. All on its own, uh, it just sort of captured. And that happens with some of the near uh, Earth asteroids. So, and it's conveniently a, cl a class A, so that's cute. Uh, but one thing about asteroids in Realism Overhaul is that they're huge. They're humongous. I don't know where the configuration is, where it sets these things, uh, but Maybe, and maybe they've changed it, I don't know, because maybe they just deleted that configuration. But last time I tried to deal with an asteroid in Realism Overhaul uh, was in my Solar System Tourism series. Arthur E. King really wanted me to wrangle an asteroid. And it only needed like 20 meters per second to capture it into Kerbin orbit. But uh, I made a really big vessel. I think I might have even used a monument launcher to launch it, I forget. But, and we had KSB Interstellar in there, so we were using Interstellar parts to capture an asteroid with a really big vehicle, and, um, well, it turns out that the asteroid had extra zeros to its tonnage, so, um, you really do want to, uh, deal with the asteroids wherever they happen to be, and having one automatically capture is brilliant. Uh, as far as actually trying to move them in Realism Overhaul, maybe they've changed this since the last time I did, because that was 1.8.1. So that was in 1.8.1. Moving the asteroids was not a deal. Uh, that the, the amount of tons that that thing was had a lot of zeros. I don't know how many, I think more than a quadrillion tons. And uh, our Delta V was reading nothing. Uh, so, yeah. Again, though, that might have changed. Now, that brings me to a second comment, which mentioned that uh, Scott Manley in his Interstellar series, which I think is 10 years old, uh, used the laser ablative engine, this one, uh, and beam a power for capturing asteroids. Again, I'm probably not going to be doing that. Uh, we're, we're probably not going to be moving the asteroids around. Uh, so that's one problem. The other thing is I didn't ask for help for this one. I asked for help with the magnetic nozzle and nobody helped me with the magnetic nozzle. See, I wanted help with the one that has 1.5 million ISP, uh, this fellow. This thing is what I wanted help with. Uh, I, I'm definitely not going to watch another YouTuber to get help for something that only gets 704 seconds of ISP. I might, uh, might be interested in something that uh, gets 1.5 million seconds of ISP, but really, uh, with 704 seconds of ISP, I've got nervous. I, I, I don't need this thing and beam power for... No, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, uh, I don't know if there's any, no, all we've got is polyvinyl chloride and all it can give me is 704 seconds of ISP. I, I can figure out something better than that. So yeah, no, that is not going to be a thing that we need to use, uh, for our purposes. I was just curious about its functionality. So, and if somebody else has made extensive use of it already, that makes me less likely to use it, not more likely. I want to do something novel after all. So uh, that's just a note. Yeah, we're, we're probably not going to be using that. I really want to use the thing with the 1.5 million seconds of ice to be, uh, you know, that, that number is what I'm looking for here. Now, if somebody could tell me how to put this to use, that would be nice. But uh, right now, I don't have an answer for that. I'll look on the wiki. I'll experiment more, of course. But last time we saw that, we didn't get much thrust out of this puppy. And that seems like a thing that we should try to use. All right. 
so that being said, we are going to continue our exploration of other options. I'll just use this as a basis, but we're going to remove this. So I have used the magneto inertial fusion engine before, but I forget what I need to do with it. It seems to have a reactor built in. Uh, so, and it's a fusion reactor, so it's advanced technology. It says it gets 5,000 seconds of ISP. I mean, see, I mean, high ISP is all over the place. We certainly don't need anything. If it's less than four digits, we're not even looking at it. This one has four digits, so that's good. And it's not a sea level engine. We're not using it down here. But do I need anything extra with it? We've got lithium and deuterium. And we probably need radiators, but we'll see about that outside. So let's just cheat this into orbit and see what happens. Okay, let me just get the RCS on. Okay, deuterium, deuterium fusion, it's switched to. Well, since we only have deuterium, I guess that would be the fusion that we'd like. It says specific impulse 6,256 seconds. It says it can deliver us 230 meters per second in 1 minute and 27 seconds. And we can see how much mass it'll use during that time. So let me just, okay, so this is what I'm familiar with. It sort of poops out little pellets, but it does seem to be actually giving us 77 kilonewtons and the delta V that we are expecting. So we can see our apple So I like this one, uh, much, less, uh, much like I uh, liked some of the other engines that I used in the solar system tourism series, uh, like the augmented arc jet. But yeah, this one is fairly simple, but obviously we're not getting much delta V, so we would want to get more lithium. It's shooting out lithium, and we can pack more lithium, but not in these tanks, I don't think. But as far as how much, lithium, how much mass of lithium we were using for 200 meters per second, it's uh, basically 0.1 tons, which is not bad. I mean, so it seems like it's getting us um, 5,000 seconds by SP or whatever. So, as far as whether we can tuck lithium into here, it's got like every propellant except for, no, I mean, uh, the KSB interstellar propellants can't go into the modular fuel tanks from real fuels very well. So we're just gonna type in lithium here. Lithium air battery, I don't know. Some of these cargo containers can carry it, I guess. Yeah. Now there's lithium and lithium six. This is lithium lithium. I don't know if it can use lithium-6, it's a, clearly a different propellant, so we can't use this tank. Um, so we would probably need a cargo container to contain it. And it's conveniently set to lithium right now, I think, yeah. So now how much delta V we have? do we have? 8,000. And that's not much extra mass. That's 189. It's reading the wrong timing though. But yeah, so this little magneto inertial fusion engine is fairly reliable, and uh, it's about time we got something like that around here. But it's not really at the top end of things, right? 5,000 is still fairly minimal. We are looking for stuff that has extra digits. So there's a magnetized fusion, target fusion reactor, that's just a reactor, a magneto hydrodynamic electric generator. So that's a generator thing. Plasma directly into megajoule energy. So, well, that's what reactors do. And a tokamak reactor. And then a microwave transducer for, and that's for the, the transmitted power. And another transceiver, Daedalus. Right, we've got Daedalus. Well, Daedalus comes in this size. <laughs> um, uh, we can't scale it down. Uh, we can scale it up. Yes, we can. Uh, so we should probably attach it to something bigger. I did briefly use this for the solar system tourism series uh, to get supplies out to a vessel that was bound out system, uh, out of the solar system. And we needed to get supplies to it very quickly and this was what we used. So this is probably going to be something that we use as well. We can see it's got my favorite 1.5 million seconds of ISP. Uh, it is really heavy by default but has a lot of thrust. And what other stats does it have? Heck, it's got a data transmitter for some reason. Um, it's using fusion pellets. Yes, it's sort of like 
the Orion uh, fission engine, you know, the one that shoots out nuclear bombs. Uh, I feel like it's sort of like that, but with fusion? I don't know. Uh, it seems like that, somewhat. So that's fancy, but uh, let's just make sure that it works. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to attach it to Space Station 5 because it's literally the only thing of a, of a sufficient size for this. Uh, we probably need extra fusion pellets, but why don't we just go with this for now. Uh, here we have a mere 1,757 meters per second, but um, I don't even know... No, why is it only 1,757 meters per second? It's probably just because we don't have enough fusion pellets. I mean, this whole thing is fairly large. The fusion pellets don't have much mass, so you can see they're being depleted, but it's like 0.2 tons. Yeah, so that the mass is in agreement. So we have a dry mass of 1,808 tons. Uh, so we are get, uh, even though it says we are only getting 1,757, we're getting that from 0.2 tons pushing 1,800 tons, so that's good. That means we are getting the ISP in here, but we have to check out there, right? Fusion pellets. Pellets. Um, so we have this cryogenic tank. Can you get fusion pellets in? We're going to need you to be bigger. Okay, now we've got a cryogenic tank with fusion pellets. Mm, no, well, we don't have the fusion pellets yet. Um, solid fusion pellets. Ah, there we go. That's what I remember about the the good old Daedalus. Yeah, we've got 443,000 meters per second, but three days. Okay, so that's that's a bit more of a problem, isn't it? Now, can we use it during time warp? I don't know. But we're going to find out. I don't know, I'm gonna have to structure this whole deal so that we make use of a lot of the parts, otherwise we're just gonna use this Daedalus a lot. But then again, maybe that's not such a bad thing. I wonder if it has a reaction wheel. It might as well have. Well, we have control. I didn't put a separate controller, I think... Yeah, we do have a controller in the station. Well, that would make sense. We don't have RCS right now, so we're going to be deorbiting. Uh, that wouldn't be good. I wonder if it has a gimbal. Do you have a gimbal? Yes, it has a gimbal. It's got everything. In fact, it even has a magnetic nozzle. Well, that would make sense, though. Uh, yeah, 1.5 million ISP. You get that with magnetic nozzles. Okay, so eventually I'm going to have it turn us prograde. Oh, we might as well deploy the station, right? There we go. Okay, here we go. Full thrust. Some engines, in case being a stellar, can do thrust during time warp, others can't. Obviously we have fizz warp, that helps a lot, but time warp? No. Maybe I can... I, how did I do it in solar system tourism? Because I'm sure I had to have this give a substantial portion of its 300,000 meters per second. And I didn't sit for three days during it. So I'll have to look at that. Maybe I found a way to add power during time warp with it. Start creating fusion pellets. Isn't that sort of a vicious circle? <laughs> uh, start creating fusion pellets. Okay. Anyway, this works though. It's definitely giving us our delta V. It's just going to take a long time to l deliver the promised 440,000 of it. But we can't really complain. Okay, so maybe 1.5 million ISP with the Daedalus engine is a bit much. I don't know. Seems reasonable. That's fusion, after all. Uh, we also have this Damasus Interstellar Nuclear Saltwater engine. It's heavier, and it has a mere 500,000 seconds of ISP. Well, it's got antimatter, uranium-233, and heavy water as opposed to the Daedalus engine, uh, which didn't have antimatter, it had fusion pellets only. So it's sort of surprising that this one is less powerful. It's got a magnetic nozzle built in, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. And 
I don't know what extra propellant it might need. Let's see, it doesn't read any delta V right now. No, it reads 267, I take it back. And so, I'm really hoping it doesn't burn antimatter. Nuclear salt water engine doesn't seem like it should be an antimatter engine, right? And normally, when I think of nuclear salt water, I don't think of antimatter. It says interstellar right there, though. So, it's it's got a light speed limiter. It's a fission engine with a light speed limiter? Hmm. That's... That's unexpected. I haven't attached radiators to... Uh, these, these come with radiators, apparently, though I can't see them. <laughs> uh, that seems a little bit cheaty. I don't know... Uh, does it need more radiator capacity? Uh... Total heat production zero. Seems like it shouldn't work, right? Seems like... It's got heat dissipation of 71 megawatts. But it's not producing any? I'm confused. It's got its own radiator. So it's only got one unit of antimatter and then it's got heavy water. So if I just increase the heavy water, would that be good enough? These IFS cryogenic tank sort of thing we need for everything. Liquid heavy water. Hmm, that doesn't seem to have increased our delta V, did it? For some reason when I type in antimatter, it doesn't actually come up with the regular antimatter tanks. Nope, it's not antimatter. Okay, let's just bring it outside and see what it uses. Well, it seems to be using all of them in tandem, judging from that. Oh. Uh, oh, okay, so we do need radiators for it, even though it didn't say so. Because we maxed out the waste heat really quickly, and then the engine stopped. Otherwise, it could give us quite a lot of thrust, it looks like, which is probably why it stopped so quickly. 253 meters per second, and then 5,000 kilowatts. Oh, sorry, kilonewtons. Effective thrust, 5,000 kilonewtons. Okay, so we need all of these things. Antimatter, uranium-233, and heavy water. Radioactive fuel container. That's what we need for... Uranium-233. We can't use the IFS thing. But we probably don't need that much. Unfortunately, we can't just get a fuel ratio with the modular fuel tanks like we do with the realism overhaul engines. Uranium-233. So that's 24,000 of that. 48,000 of that, but here we have 80 of those for every one of those. So, we probably don't need that much. We need 600. We'll take 750 just for the heck of it. And then, I don't know, do a uranium-233 decomposes or something. Um, and then we have the antimatter. Let's just get one of these containers. Then we need about 600 of it, too. Should be easy. I mean, it's easy as long as you don't have to collect the antimatter. That's a whole other business, collecting antimatter. We may or may not do that. No, let's just top it off. It's in grams, well, milligrams. Okay, we got some extra solid hydrogen for the heck of it. And now... What do we have as far as delta V? Ah, 155,899. Okay, so that's cooking. But it's still not clear. Waste heat production at 100%. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, heat production was there, but waste heat production is 100 gigawatts. Um, can we scale this down a bit? <laughs> I don't need that much thrust anyway. No, we can't scale it down. So... Yeah, hmm, 100 gigawatts is a lot. Well, now we could keep it throttled down. Let's just thrust limit it. The light speed limiter is special. 
Now we don't get all this delta v very quickly if we thrust limit it, or even if we don't. But okay, let's see about these graphene radiators. Let's just stick them out the back. Oh, now waste heat production is three gigawatts. Oh, but I I did scale down this thrust. Okay, let's unthrust limit it. 100 gigawatts. It looks like these uh, can handle it. 125 gigawatts right there. Gotta love the graphene radiators. Okay. Let's take it outside and try that. Base Station 5. What was this thing called again? Still don't understand the nuclear saltwater aspect of it. Damasis. Okay, well the radiators are out. Okay, I guess we can start with it being an inclination adjustment. Okay, it's riving up. We very quickly get 1,000 kilonewtons. 500,000 seconds of ISP as predicted. And at full thrust, the waste heat still goes up. The waste heat still goes up. I can, if I want to keep the waste heat stable, 1,300 kilonewtons is what I can get. So, 10 hours, 152 meters per second. One, sorry, 152 kilometers per second. But, one, we need fusion pellets for. The Daedalus engine, we need fusion pellets. This one, we need antimatter. And not that much, though. We need, I mean, for this amount of delta V, uh, we could just have 600 milligrams of antimatter. Of course, in real life, that's a lot, but... Um, so otherwise, we would need uranium-233 and then heavy water. Okay, well, I think we've uh, discovered this one. Nice green hue to it. Now, mind you, this Delta-V is while pushing a 1,800-ton vessel, right? Well, I'm feeling a lot better about our prospects uh, compared to what we had to select from before. Uh, we had the Discovery. Now, the Discovery, I thought... Where is it now? Down there. Okay, the Discovery, I thought, had its own reactor, and it does. I mean, it has reactor power here and everything. But it also says here, the engine needs to be directly attached to an external power generator or it provided megajoule power from an external source. So, okay. Let's try that. Let's have, well, we already had it on here. Let's add an extra reactor. Maybe that was the problem. But it's already a reactor, so I mean, I think it's duplicating that whole theory. But just in case, let's add a magnetized target fusion reactor for the heck of it. Oh, I, uh, we probably need a generator too. Okay, well, this thing had fairly good delta V reading before as well. Here it says 12 hours. We've got a reactor, we've got a generator. Well, we can probably start that. Hmm. Well, it seems to, yeah, it seems to need that reactor and generator. I thought that this already had a reactor, but... Okay, so that seems to be the issue. Now that doesn't answer the standalone magnetic nozzle one, where we had a reactor as well, but maybe I missed something there. Maybe I didn't have the generator, and it needed a generator for that? So this can get 24,000 in 10 hours. And its specific impulse is 14,761 right now. With this reactor. Of course, different reactors will get different performance. So we get 50 kilonewtons. Which, depending on the vehicle, could be fine. Okay, so... I'll have to remember that just because this definitely has a reactor on it, right? It says here uh, deuterium helium 3 fusion right on it. Uh, it still needs another reactor, I think. Or maybe it was not working last time for no particular reason? Not sure.
Anyway, but this works right now as this setup. I don't know how big a reactor it needs though. So that's another question. Maybe we could get by with a tinier reactor to start things out. Maybe a fission reactor even to uh, start it. Because I think in the description it just said it needed something to start it up. So we've got a Hellforged Met Metallic Hydrogen Anvil. We've seen Metallic Hydrogen around, but I don't know what it is why it's required exactly. There's the Antimatter Catalyzed Fusion Reactor. And then there's the Thermal Rocket Nozzle. This is the nice simple one uh, where you have a reactor producing thermal power. I don't know if this is the best reactor. This is for the specific IXS hull. So might not be the best thing to use. Let's just have, uh, let's say this fusion reactor, okay? Because it looks fancy. Might not be the best choice though. So, with this fusion reactor, this thermal rocket nozzle using the liquid hydrogen that we have gets an ISP of 1485 max, a thrust of 686 kilonewtons and 3992 meters per second. But uh, let's say we used a lesser technology than this. Let's find our reactors here. Well, let's just make sure. On on its own, without a reactor, does it... Oh, it just does it on its own. It has... It has a reactor built in? Um, I'm not too sure about this little thing. It says maximum reactor power, 5,000 megawatts. So it doesn't even need the reactor. I thought it used to need the reactor. Surely it benefits from reactor or something? Um, I used to, I thought, pair it with an antimatter initiated fusion reactor and stuff like that. But maybe it doesn't need that anymore, which makes me sad because it doesn't look like it has a reactor on it and really shouldn't. This looks like a nozzle. Oh, wait. Hold on a sec. Hold that thought. Um, now, with this particular reactor, we're getting a totally different ISP 7000. We're getting less thrust, 350 kilonewtons. So obviously a lot more delta V because of the higher specific impulse. So it does depend. Uh, so it's got a base. It's, oh, wait. No. <laughs> okay, let me take that out of the scene. Hold on. Uh, it might be misconfigured. It seems to remember the old reactor whatever reactor it's attached to so on let's let's do a sanity check we're going to take this outside without a reactor and see what it does and i think it shouldn't do anything and then we'll attach a reactor i think the stats just retain the previous reactor but they'll get all seen when we go outside See here, it's not reading any delta V right now, and let's just make sure. Uh, not connected to a power source. It's, it's even telling us. So, yeah, I can't even throttle up right now. So, okay. So let's just say that we attach a uh, molten salt reactor to it, which here we will call low tech. It gets 2,444 and a mere 990 seconds of ISP. So basically this becomes an NTR, a normal Nerva in this situation, which makes sense. Then it gets uh, what you would expect from a Nerva. So that's hopefully correct. The, the problem is it's probably retaining those stats right now. But that okay. Um, Let's say a spherical tokamak tank uh, reactor here. Okay, now it's getting 7,000 seconds. This seems like what it normally gets from fusion things. Uh, but in this case, it gets very low vacuum thrust, 33 kilonewtons. Now we've got all the radiator capacity we could possibly want. So let's try the magnetized target fusion reactor. 
So for some reason, magnetized fusion only gets us 1,500. It is the same as it had before, and about 700 kN. So the thrust is good. In fact, it gets us a thrust to weight ratio of 1 with this bit. But its uh, ISP isn't as good as some of the other fusion options. So these are the reactors. Oh, so what about the Tri-Alpha Colliding Beam Fusion Reactor? What the heck? Well, again, pretty low ISP. And not as much thrust. Uh, does it really get this outside? Let, let's see. Let's see what it, if that's really, really what it's going to get. Okay, throttling up. Okay, well, see, now that it's completely different out here. It can po uh, have a greater power output, and it's responding to our thrust. See, it's the thermal nozzle is only drawing 1.66 megawatts, apparently. But that gets us micronewtons and 35 meters per second in 4,268 days. Years. Years. It's ideally suited for electric propulsion, requiring fewer radiators to dissipate waste heat. Well, that probably means it doesn't make too much thermal power. Uh, aneuronic fusion modes, allowing megajoule power production at very high efficiency. Oh, it's got a generator built in. It's already converting it into um, electricity or megajoules. So that's why it wasn't producing enough thermal power because it's already got a generator. This says it's got a lot of power. This is my favorite combo. This is what I would use for the for the impulse engines on the Enterprise kind of thing. 7,000 seconds of ISP. I mean that's not great great but you can see that LTV it gets is pretty good and Fortunately, the Starship Enterprise has plenty of volume to carry liquid hydrogen as you need it, or whatever other propellant you might want to feed into it. Uh, let's just make sure it gets its 7,000 here. Antimatter initiated fusion, though. At least it doesn't require that much antimatter. It's not like you're shoving antimatter through the reactor constantly. But is it not carrying its antimatter with it? Uh, I think we need to add the antimatter. All of them have fiddly requirements, you see. That's why we have to figure out how to put them together. Well, that's reading some delta V back there. And 44 minutes, 17,000 meters per second. Actually, this nozzle can turn for sure. It's definitely got gimbling. It could be used as a launch engine too, if you don't mind spinning up a reactor that uses antimatter as part of its deal. Fusion is not too bad, right? 43 minutes, 17,000 meters per second. I mean, you get engines that can provide a whole lot more delta V, but not in as good a time. So this is still a thing to consider for our purposes, depending on the situation. And it is getting its 7,000 seconds of ISP. This one I've used before, it is the nuclear light bulb. It gets 3,500. It's a closed cycle gas core engine. Uh, overcomes the limits of solid core nuclear thermal engines by allowing the reactor core to melt and vaporize. Sounds wonderful, isn't it? You're actually allowing it to vaporize, reaching a much higher core temperature and exhaust velocity. Uh, no radioactive material leaves the engine though. Uh, the vaporized hellfire is safely contained, uh, uh, etc, etc. And uh, it's just creating a lot of thermal energy to heat up the hydrogen again. So uh, I've tried this before, it works. Um, 8,839 meters per second, 44 minutes. So same thrust. Uh, well, same time, not thrust, same time that we had with the thermal rocket nozzle. Overall, it's lighter uh, because we have the reactor plus the thermal rocket nozzle, and the nozzle is five tons right there, and we didn't resize it, but uh, it's melting down. <laughs> I mean, it's not a meltdown meltdown. Well, it's sort of. Anyway, but yeah, that's interesting, right? But half the ISP, 
and less thrust, but still a thing. Still a thing. Uh, lower tech than some of the reactors. I and mean, after all, we basically need fusion attached to the thermal rocket nozzle to get 7,000. This one we don't need fusion for. We just need a lot of guts. So uh, Pelican Thermal Turbojet VTOL is separate. <laughs> We're not going to test it like this. Aerospike Turbo Ramjet is also separate. We're, we'll, we'll have to set that aside for now. Aerospike Thermal Ramjet already sounds like what I've got for my Scram Spike, right? I've got a plane that has an Aerospike and a Turbo Ramjet. It actually has a Scramjet too. Uh, so I think I would rather use that which is a much more sophisticated design than this. Uh, radiant Drive Laser Core Antimatter Engine. Well, when you throw antimatter at it, now look at this ISP. 20 million seconds of ISP. Well, antimatter should get you that sort of thing. So wait. It lets out a gamma ray laser. I was wondering if we were shooting the laser at it. Uh, from excited matter antimatter ambi plasma. Okay, I'm gonna leave the antimatter on because it says antimatter. We might as well. Oh my God! Look at all that. But okay, so we've got a catch twenty two situation. We've got five point seven million seconds of ISP, good, but we've got fifty one thousand years, bad. Also, um, really bad quality pink purple stripes, pinkish purple. Um, it says 162.8 kilonewtons. It says it has a reactor and a generator built in. It can be scaled down. One point, okay, so there we have it at 1.25 meters. Okay, so now we're good on the radiators. We could actually make them smaller. But now it's going to take 40, 412 years, it says. But nothing in the VAB is true. <laughs> so uh, nothing in the VAB is true. And is that affected? I don't see any fuels here. Uh, I mean, built in. There's nothing built in, which is weird. It says photon antimatter. It probably doesn't need the hydrogen or anything. It's probably just using this antimatter, right? No. Apparently not. Because otherwise it would go down by more delta V when I reduce the antimatter. What are you using? <laughs> um, let me reduce the hydrogen. It is using the hydrogen somehow. It doesn't does it say anywhere here that it's using the hydrogen? You know, normally there's a fuel selector, right? Laser core antimatter engine. It has a fission thing. It has no built-in antimatter. It doesn't seem to need this antimatter. Let's take that off. It doesn't seem to need that antimatter. It doesn't say anything about antimatter. This is all very suspicious. Somebody went off the deep end on this one. And that's saying something when we're talking about KSP Interstellar. Okay, four years is not too bad to deliver 71 million meters per second. Oh no. Uh, as soon as I light the engine, we get from four years to the longer duration and no delta V. Okay, so this needs something extra. It doesn't say what it needs, but maybe antimatter. <laughs> maybe antimatter, right? I mean, let's try tossing on antimatter. Okay, lighting it. Oh, okay. Well, it's doing something. So antimatter was necessary. It's definitely using the antimatter and shooting the antimatter out directly. So it's basically like a antimatter photon beam. It's Producing about 5 kilonewtons at our current thrust. The problem is, it says we've got this delta V here, but it's lying. Because we're eventually going to run out of the antimatter. You can see we're using 11 per second at 20, 20 kilonewtons. Now, remember, the antimatter is measured in milligrams. 
So it might have the 20 million ISP that it says it does, but if you're only carrying 40 grams of antimatter, that doesn't amount to a whole lot of actual delta V. I don't know where it's getting this delta V number from, but it just doesn't have that. But uh, we're basically carrying an hour worth of antimatter. So this engine is a little bit suspicious. This one's definitely big on... big on promises, bad on delivery. It's got some sort of number issue where it's giving us a 70 million meter per second delta V figure there. But it can't deliver that. And let's not talk about the time. But I think that wraps it up for today as far as my examination of the engines. I'm sure it is a long enough video as it is and we will continue through them and see what we've got but we've uh, hit some of the highlights if you will uh we'll see what else there might be i'm probably not going to do aluminum photo photon sail separately from the solar sail uh somebody mentioned that the solar sails work better if you get closer to the star the sun and we might test that separately at some points and see what we get out of it uh, next up will be the Rosinante Kerbstein Fusion Drive, which we know is cheating. It's just blatantly uh, taken from Expanse and hoping for the best. It's got 500,000 seconds of ISP. We'll try that out next time and see exactly how it fits into everything. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.